Shine a light from what they got again. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. Goodness, that sounds really loud. Um, welcome to today's extra um, ordinary um, SPNP um, committee meeting. Full deck there. Great to see lots of in interest in our um, agenda today. Um, particular welcome to Leon. I thought you were going to be zo zooming in, but you've graced us with your presence. Welcome. Um, Shane, could you please open the meeting? Karakia. Kinatatukatoa <laughs> Tautakamaikiro Kia Shane, thank you. Right, so we launch straight in. Have we got people outside requiring seats? A couple more. Did not pull that chair away from the mirror? Oh, okay. Leon will take one. Okay, launching straight in then, please. Um, First agenda item, apologies. I have two from Councillor Coles and Councillor Weber. Somebody have to move that for me. Andrew and seconded um, Roger. All those in favour say aye. aye. Against carried. Moving on then to disclosure of members' interests. I'm not aware of there being any. No, excellent. Uh, and then on to late items. Again, not convinced there are any of those either which leads us to the confirmation of the order of meeting, which is as appears in your agenda. Can I have somebody who's happy to move that for me, please? Marcus, seconded Bruce, all those in favour say aye. aye. Against, carried. Takes us to the confirmation of minutes from our previous meeting. So on page eight of our agenda, we'll just flick through those pages as we do, page nine, and 10, 11, 12, 13, clear. Uh, just um, on page five of the uh, minutes, it's at uh, page 10 on my agenda, proposed plan change 13, the first line, the last word, I think that should be Haley, not Haley. The name is Haley Thomas. Thanks for that, Claire. So it's page 14 and 15, 16 and 17. That being the only change, have I, somebody's happy to move? Lou, seconded Claire, all those in favour say aye. aye. Against, carried. Great, so it moves us to our first substantive item on today's agenda, which is the approval of the consultation document and supporting information for our LTP for public consultation. So welcome Haven, <laughs> Kirsty and Charlotte, take it away. Thank you, thank you, Councillor O'Regan. 
So we've been working on this project pretty intensively for, I guess, the last 12 to 18 months. There's been a series of workshops and presentations over that time. And um, hopefully we're all quite familiar of the package of um, documents that are appended to this report. I believe it's the third iteration that I've been sent out as a full package. Um, and they have um, been through the audit process. So we've heard back from our auditor and Leon, who we have in the room, that we have, um, we have audit clearance to go ahead um, with our consultation document. Um, for the eagle-eyed amongst us, you might notice there's some track changes in some of the documents, um, but not the infrastructure strategy and the consultation document itself. That's because um, when we made changes with audit, they requested to see clean versions of the document, and it just became a bit, a bit of a challenge to keep all the track changes in those two. But all the other changes in the other documents are there and track changed. Um, Thank you for the councillors who have already provided feedback um, on the consultation document. So we're working a way to make those minor amendments and we will provide them to our um, designer so that they'll come into the printed version. Um, yeah, so that was very helpful. You'll see in the recommendations that recommendation F is a requesting delegated authority to the chief executive so that, he, uh, so that we can make any further minor amendments as we before we get it to the printed version. Um, and just on that, it's probably worth highlighting, I don't know if we can bring it up on the screen, but in the, in the actual report itself, we've noted council and we'll just be requesting to change that to the strategic planning and policy committee um, before it goes out. So I don't know if there's anything else we wanna highlight or if we just wanna open up and go into questions. Um, so through the chair, ten, uh, kia ora koutou. Just in terms of the changes that Haven has referred to, um, they are through the recommendation where we've previously referred to or do refer to council in the recommendation that we are um, uh, requesting of you is to change the word council to strategic planning and policy committee. Um, so if, if comfortable, we'll ask that the chair present that to you at the appropriate point in the meeting. Um, we have had feedback, as Haven mentioned, from some councillors with some um, amendments being requested, um, typos and things that we as staff had also picked up on. So um, there is that um, provision within the recommendation section that does provide um, the Chief Executive with delegated authority to make minor amendments, and we are comfortable that the majority of those um, in reviewing them do fall within that scope of a minor amendment. We've also been provided with some feedback about the consultation document itself in respect of Memorial Park. And if I may, I would just like to, um, to respond um, to concerns that have been raised. It's acknowledged that we have gone through a public engagement process and we did receive a lot of feedback from the community um, in respect of the concept plan that was put out in, in draft form. And staff have been working with various stakeholders and partners to address those concerns. And my understanding is that there is a further process underway. So no decision has been made at this point in time in respect of the, the concept plan. So at the 6th of April SPNP meeting, there will be a proposed changes that will be presented to elected members for consideration. And then following that, it is intended that there would be finalized amendments to the, the concept plan um, that would be worked on through April and May and presented for final, final adoption of that concept plan at the meeting on the 1st of June. So the consultation itself does make reference um, to that, the fact that there have been no um, decisions made, that we don't have a final concept plan adopted. Um, Charlotte and I have talked about um, the wording in the consultation document as to whether it's possible to make that more clear and also the collateral that will support our engagement, our face-to-face -face and, um, and other forms of engagement with the community through this process to make it clear that there is um, a separate process underway. In terms of what we're asking the community to feed back on, it's essentially do they want us to, um, to 
provide funding for the concept plan and there is no funding allocated within the long-term plan in its draft form. Rather, what we're suggesting is that as money becomes available through asset sales, um, do the community want that funding to be allocated to um, giving effect to a concept plan or not? Um, so there are two simple questions that are, that are being asked. Um, and speaking with um, project staff yesterday, what is included in the consultation document are a number of component parts um, from the concept plan. And, and as I mentioned, you are going to be presented in, at the beginning of April with some proposed changes. Um, so we would propose that the, the consultation document is amended to reflect um, those proposed changes. Um, so for example, there's a bullet point there, pergola realignment and refurbishment. And I think um, we're not proposing that we will realign the, the pergola. So we would be seeking to delete that word realignment. Similarly, there is reference in the bullet points to broad pathway spine, and that's now commonly referred to as an accessible pathway. So we would be looking to make that change. Um, we've got a bullet point there, lighting and mara hupara. It's actually two distinct things. So lighting is one, and we would be then looking to create a new bullet point, um, Mara Hupara Play Trail. Um, and those are the, the changes that are then would be consistent with what will be coming to you in, in April. Um, thanks, Kirsty. It seems like quite a complex um, situation. Um, firstly, you mentioned that it would be funded not through rates, but through asset sales, um, because that wasn't actually um, completely clear, I guess, because um, it does mention impacts on rates as well. So um, I guess I, I, I appreciate that there was some there for asset sales, but it sounds like now it's likely that more funding will be relied on through asset sales than through rates. Is that, is that what you're saying? Through you, Madam Chair, um, Deborah is in the room and has put her hand up to respond to that question, Councillor St. Peter. The asset sales that they're planning would be used to fund the capital work, not the operating. So the rates implication will be for the operating costs and we leave the um, sale of the assets to actually fund capital work. I have another question though, and that was that the um, introduction to the um, topic mentioned that we need your help to decide which comes first, uh, but the options that currently are being there, are it's all or it's nothing. And so, with the changes that are proposed, you know, the separate process, will the options be sort of stretched out a bit more so you can actually decide at what level the funding will go, you know, so what could be given priority and yeah, so rather than the all or nothing approach. So I, I had the same, I noticed the same for the Cambridge um, rate taken into as well, you know, whether or not it's, There'll, there'll be sort of feedback from the community sort so that we can look at what's the most important stuff to do first. Yeah. So through you, Madam Chair, um, there will be that opportunity to provide feedback, yes. Just to ask a, a question, in terms of just getting, and every time you read the document, you pick up another really minor thing. So, and you've said that we can do some minor alterations. What's your absolute, deadline if councillors pick up on anything that you need this information because that's really critical isn't it um, anything pressing would be um prefer to get that back within the next 24 hours so yep. that we can get this to the printer obviously we need to print a few copies to help with our uh, consultation process so that would be really appreciated um if you could get those those amendments back as soon as yeah. you can Okay, so everyone's got that message. It's if you've got something, we need to get it to the staff so that they can get this. And, and these are just typos and things like that. Hey? Yep. 
So through you, Madam Chair, um, any, any feedback in that vein should be directed to Haven. Um, he is completing or working with the, the master copy, if you like. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, we ourselves have picked up things as we've gone through with a fresh set of eyes. Um, you know, just minor yeah, minor yeah. things, and I'm sure Leon's in the room, um, and you'd appreciate that any substantive change would require us to liaise with audit, um, who have completed their review and have signed off on the basis of what they've seen to date. And just a, just another comment that may or may not fall into the minor uh, category, and it may have been picked up. I note that the reason for not going ahead with the Cambridge Library is because of, uh, we're unable to fund it uh, within our debt levels. And yet at the beginning of the uh, document, we're talking that we've got $108 million free board. So it's probably not a good excuse or reason to put out to the community. I don't know if that's been picked up, but it seems to me that the reason should be taken out and um, otherwise the argument's gonna come back when you've still got 108 million, why is nine gonna cause a problem? Thanks for that. I wonder, um, Leon, did you want to speak to your um, process, your comments on your um, report at all? <clears throat> Kia ora, Chair. Um, tēnā kutu katoa. Thank you very much for allowing me to attend your meeting. And I think Chris has summed up the situation perfectly. Uh, the audit went really well, and I think uh, management and staff was really well prepared. And uh, Apart from spelling mistakes and grammar issues, which I obviously, with English being my third language, I won't be able to pick up, uh, we're comfortable with where the document is, is at the moment. But if you're going to make significant changes, uh, we'll work with management to get that done. Wonderful. That's good, good to hear. Thanks, Leon. Claire, did you have another comment? Yes, I wanted to talk about the Pirongia Naroto um, cycleway project. Because in the maps, it actually specifies the, the route through the properties yeah, that's proposed. Um, so there was also a cycleway meeting about it, and they, they wondered whether or not, rather than naming the actual properties, if it's sort of a, just a sort of a, a more generalized route was shown, just so people have an idea of the length and yeah, the intent. Through the chair, so I recall that this has earlier been raised and Charlotte's just confirmed that it is going to be amended for the document that is released, yep. Any other questions or comments from anybody? Um, through the chair, can I please just thank the elected members for the way in which you have partnered with staff to um, get the draft LTP consultation document and supporting um, documentation to this point. Um, it has been long challenging. There is a very significant um, quantity of documents that we have compiled. Um, that is a legislative requirement, um, but very much appreciate the way in which you have worked with us. Thanks, Kirsty. So I have a handful of um, recommendations there appearing on page 20, 21 and 22, obviously with the small amendment in terms of not referencing council, but rather the strategic planning and policy committee. Uh, there are nine recommendations there. Are we happy to deal with them all at once or Roger? Uh, just a question of clarification. The fact that all of those appendices are now within this committee's um, uh, meeting minutes, that will mean that all of those documents will now be publicly accessible through the website. Through the chair, um, the documents have been made available on our website with the as part of the agenda, so they are publicly available and will be now that they're yeah. um, they've been released as part of the supporting documentation. Thank you. So we have those uh, recommendations there. Are we happy to deal with them all at, at, at once? They, I see no reason not to. So do I have anybody prepared to move? Liz, you're happy to move? Delighted to move. And do I have somebody happy to second? Jim will second it. All those in favour say aye. aye. Against? Carried. Hey, thank you so much. Well done, staff. It's been a mammoth, mammoth effort from you all and it's much appreciated. And thank you for working with us too, Kirsty. Right. 
So we move on then to our next item on the agenda, which is the Māori Wards engagement um, item. And Joe, I believe, is here for that. Have a seat, Joe. And Gary. Good afternoon. Um, we have received a briefing recently on the recent changes that we've had to the legislation in relation to Māori wards. So the next step in the process, if you wish to consider Māori wards now for the 2022 elections, is um, community consultation and continuing our ongoing engagement with Māori. Um, so this is the purpose of this report that's in front of you today, um, to get your endorsement to commence that. Um, there's just two points I want to bring up, just specifically, um, in relation to, one is in relation to the report. Um, there is a figure of 15% in the consultation document in terms of those uh, percentage of population that identify as Māori and you'll see in the report, I don't know if you picked it up, they actually had a figure of 18.7. Um, that figure is actually more aligned to the, the um, number of Māori in our area that actually are of Māori descent. So what we're proposing is that we actually use across all our messaging is that 15% figure, which is those that identify as Māori. Um, and we've also got a change to the recommendation, just because at the back of the consultation document, we've framed it as a feedback, feedback um, document, but there's just a few places that we've used the word submission instead, where we should have used feedback. So it's just really seeking approval to make mine an editorial amendments. I can read that out. Oh, I, I can read So oh. C would now be approve the consultation document, include an appendix one of this report, document number 10568770, for use in the consultation of Māori wards, subject to minor editorial amendments, in particular in relation to replacing the word submission with the word feedback in the document as appropriate. Okay, so obviously this is an issue that's come before us that we need to make a decision on whether we go out to our community consult on. Um, obviously, um, it's important to remember we've got to remain um, pretty neutral in terms of our stance around the substantive um, matter, but in terms of consulting with the community, it seems to me we really need to. So do I have anybody here who's happy to move? I'm happy to move from the chair. Do I have some second? Jim will second. All those in favour say aye. aye. Against? Carried. So Hazel, did you, did you have something you wanted to add? I'm just not sure that I've got this correctly in the head that we're going out to consult the whole community, mm. everybody. We actually know what the outcome of that's going to be. And, and I thought that was a complete waste of time. I, when I thought through what this process was, um, and I hadn't, I hadn't heard a, a Māori opinion on, on that either. Um, so I just thought I don't feel comfortable with it um, and I, I, I just think I, I just think it's, it's a waste of time because we know from past history and even some of the present history that what the answer is actually going to be and I don't think that that does our relationship I don't know I have as I say I haven't had a, I haven't heard a Maori perspective on this yet and to me that would have been crucial and absolutely necessary uh, for us then to have a balanced view on this. So that was, uh, and I, whether, because I think I did that meeting by Zoom, you always miss out on, on quite a few of, of details of doing things like that, which is why I don't like that Zoom method of actually being able to put the whole, the whole story over. But, uh, and I wondered at the end of it, who voted for, con um, to go out to the community concern, what, what a waste of time. Yeah, I think Gary and Jim um, have to clarify. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just, just, just to clarify, we do have a targeted program of consultation with Iwi uh, as well. So that will be quite, and, and you know, we've already uh, have a good body of knowledge of um, what 
Māori, uh, <coughs> iwi and, and mana whenua thoughts are around the, uh, the Māori ward issue. Um, for example, as late as October last year, we had a letter from Waikato Tainui um, giving us their, their views in support of Māori wards. Um, so we will make sure that those views are still still um, still their views. Uh, we will be discussing it with um, other iwi and uh, mana whenua groupings in, in the district. So uh, from, a, from an iwi point of view, um, that's where we will gather, we, we will certainly gather those views um, at that point. In relation to the general consultation, I think that's, um, Joe, do you want to pick up on in terms of legal requirements around that? Yeah, so it's one of the, um, we've got obligations under the Local Government Act in terms of being when we make decisions to be able to um, take into account the, the community views. And um, so this is, you know, one of the purposes of this um, wider consultation that we're undertaking. But we're certainly, you know, that'll be, um, as Gary said, there'll be a body of, of knowledge in those conversations that have, you know, have been happening and will happen over the next month, which will be captured in that report that comes back to you in May. Oh, Andrew, Jim, and then Lou. Thanks, Madam Chair. <coughs> You know, I don't entirely agree with you, Hazel, I have to say, um, and, and the docu uh, docu consultation document going out is quite informative. It's got pros and cons. Um, things there are quite possibly our general uh, population hasn't considered, and it will be quite interesting to see what uh, results we do get out of this. So, yeah, I'm definitely in favour of the consultation going forward. Through Madam Chair, along the same lines as Andrew, I think it's presumptuous of us to assume we know what the outcome is going to be. Um, we, it, this is a really significant change to our electoral system, mm -hmm. and I think we do need to go out. And we've been told often enough, don't take one Maori perspective as the only one, and we're likely to get feedback across the board but it'll be over to us at that point to actually decide where to go. So look, I, I firmly believe getting out there to the community and getting as many points of view brought forward, the better off we're gonna be. So look, I, I yeah, I, I disagree a little bit on us knowing what the outcome will be because we need to be looking at this with an open mind. Lou. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just uh, I agree and concur with the two previous speakers completely. I do feel too that are we linking this to the reduction of councils we're having? Is there a link to that to encourage the public to re realise that we are discussing and discussing this, are considering a reduction in the amount of councillors sitting around this table at the same time? Or is that not going to be a part of that? Madam Chair? Joe probably needs to answer that. Well, just at the moment, in terms of we've been having those informal discussions with you in terms of workshops at the moment, in terms of looking at how um, our representation might go going forward. So we haven't got any, um, at this point in time, we haven't got any decision to, co to actually go out to the community and do any pre-consultation on that at, the, at this particular point in time. Yeah, and, and often if, if we make the decision, the way it's kind of structured in the um, legislation, if, if you make a make a decision on the Māori ward question and then and then uh, um, depending on where you land with that, if you go with the Māori ward, then you take out that, that, um, that group of the population and then you've got your um, general wards to, to deal with. So that's at the moment how they kind of stage the representation review. So it's this question first and then we and then we move on based on the answer to that question and on to the next phase. Roger, did you have something and then clear? Thank you, Madam Chair. No, I, just in my mind, they're two separate issues. Yeah. And I think we need to deal with them separately. And, and Joe's clarified that. Clear. Thanks. Uh, under the... Um, page seven of the report or page 2287 of our agenda with the engagement with Māori, the last sentence on the page, it says, because of the length of the consultation period, this may be difficult to schedule. So yeah, I'm just concerned that because of the tight time frames, that we might not allow sufficient time to hear 
the views um, across all of the Māori groups. And so, um, which I think is really critical. And, and so I just want to get some assurance from you that you think that the time allowed has been sufficient that that the Maori groups themselves aren't actually going to feel under pressure and perhaps we're we're not allowing them you know the time they need which is one of the key requirements of our significance and engagement policy thank you councillor look um i've had a couple of conversations with every groups telling them that this is coming up and they've said look we'll give it high priority i can't say that for everyone but i suspect that that would be the the case across the board um, as well. So that's probably the best assurance I can give. And I guess at the other end of it, we, we just, you know, we have to close things out at, at a point. Otherwise, you know, we've got a magic date that we can't go past. Um, so statutory so time constraint, we're, otherwise we won't get it through. But yeah, we are pre-warning that, that something could be on the way pending a your decision today. Any other further comments, questions, Mariata? Oh, tēnā tātou. Um, so I know our te kanohi representatives, along with uh, Shane and others, uh, have been a part of, of the designing of this um, consultation document to go out. Um, we also had <laughs> preconceived ideas at the time as well. And some of your concerns that you've raised here, Hazel, have also been concerns um, of our group as we grappled with the time frames, the limitation and time frames, and also um, you know the meaningful engagement that we're wanting to <clears throat> undertake with our Māori groups. Um, we've also been looking across other councils at the same time, like the Wellington City Council, and some of the steps they've taken as well to engage more meaningfully, um, which is a question that I had put to the team around you know, um, being able to uh, filter out uh, the views of Māori, uh, those who identify Māori as Māori within our constituency as well. And, um, but I think that will come later. I'm okay with us consulting widely at this point in time. Um, but as Jim has mentioned previously in a few of our hui, um, he's also talked about the responsibilities that we have moralistically and I think is at a, at a leadership level as well um, as a leadership group around um, honouring te tiriti o waitangi and the obligations that we have to undertake as we go through these processes uh, you know concurrently <coughs> through the voting so yeah koe nei taku whakaroi tēnei wā Kia ora. So were no further comments. So we were, I went through pretty speedily. I was happy to move John, um, Jim seconded. And did I put it to the room? All those in favor say aye. aye. Against, carried, wonderful. So that moves us on then to a resolution to exclude the public. 